wave interactions. Reviewing from a last semester, interference is when two or more waves add together to form a resultant waveform. Construct of interference is when the waves go through each other, they add together to make a taller wave. Destructive interference, as the waves go through each other, they subtract from each other to make a smaller wave. If those waves happen to have the same amplitude, those waves will completely cancel each other out and we get total destructive interference as they pass through. We also learned about standing waves when identical periodic waves are traveling in opposite directions. The ones we talked about were vibrating string or sound waves in a column of air. This was the drawing we had for the vibrating strings. And we have one wave that's going in this direction and the other one is opposite of that wave going in this direction. And there's a point in the center where there's no movement. We call that a node. And that is also where complete destructive interference is occurring. Those two waves are canceling each other out at that one point. These ones where we have the maximum movement are called antinodes. That is constructive interference. It's the crest of one wave and the crest of the other wave added together to make an extra tall wave. We looked at sound waves coming out from an original source. And we're going to continue with the same kind of diagram, but relate it to light waves as well. If we have a source here, such as a light bulb, light is going to be coming out in all directions. For our drawing, we're going to let the line represent the crest of the wave, and the spaces represent the troughs of the wave. These would be the two words for light waves, because they are transverse waves. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. They have compressions and rarefactions, and so every line would be like a compression. Remember the wavelength is the distance between the two wave crests or between two compressions. If we have two sources of waves, as those waves come out, they move through each other and they make a pattern here. Focusing on these last two rays, you can see that they cross each other at this one spot. This represents a crest from one wave and a crest from the other wave touching each other. This is where we have constructive interference. These waves are going to add together to make an extra tall wave. If I go through and mark all these spots where they have the little X's where the wave crests are adding together, we get this pattern on here called the interference pattern. In the center here, represents a spot where we have a crest from one wave and a trough from the other wave. This is where destructive interference occurs. This whole pattern is called the interference pattern. It's something you have to be able to recognize and visualize when the word or term interference pattern comes up. If we have two different sources um, and I move them, we can see that that interference pattern changes as we move it. Watch again. When we get near the end here, there's this magical spot where they are a half wavelength apart, where we have nothing on the two sides and one big construct of interference on the top and on the bottom. On the sides, it's total destructive interference. And we use this quite often. Uh, CB radios on the trucks, if you ever look at their antennas, they have an antenna on the left side and on the right side of the cab or on the left and right side of their bumpers. And this distance between them is a half of the wavelength of the radio wave that they're using on their CB radio. The purpose is to get this interference pattern because they want to talk to people in front of them and behind them on the freeway. They don't need to talk to anybody on the sides. And the advantage of using this interference pattern is that they can send these waves twice the distance, forwards and backwards, using the same amount of energy. We also see this with FM radio station antennas. When you're driving down the freeway on Highway 5 or Highway 99, you'll notice that there's two large antennas about 100 to 300 meters away from each other. These are FM waves, and they are, again, a half wavelength apart from each other. And the purpose is to send waves up and down the valley. They don't need to send waves out to the side because there's mountains on both sides. This interference pattern allows them to send their radio waves twice the distance with the same amount of energy. The other place we see this is on a radar. On a radar, they have not only two antennas, but they have a whole series. So when I add a third one on here, you can see that that beam changes. Adding a fourth one, it changes. Adding a fifth one, each time I add a new antenna, this beam gets narrower and narrower and narrower. On a radar, they have a whole line of antennas all in a row. And it, has, it creates a very thin, bright beam that will go a long distance. And then they do a frequency shift on each one of them, and they can make that beam move across the sky. So let's look at our constructive interference. Here we're going to add wave 1 plus wave 2 to get a resultant wave 
in this picture, wave one and wave two have the same frequency, the same wavelength, the same amplitude, and most importantly, the same starting point. These are both starting at the beginning of the wave series. That starting point is called the phase. And we say that those two waves are in phase with each other or have a phase shift of zero degrees. For destructive interference, these two waves need to have the same frequency, the same wavelength, and to completely cancel out, they need to have the same amplitude. What's different on these waves is the starting point. This one starts on zero. This one starts over here at 180 degrees. So we say that it has a phase shift of 180 degrees, or it's 180 degrees out of phase. Looking at our sine wave pattern here, um, this is zero, this is 180 degrees, it completes the whole pattern in 360 degrees. So in the middle here is 90 degrees, and down here would be 270. So for each of the following diagrams, I would like you to tell what is the phase shift, and then you're going to add the waves together to find out what the resultant wave looks like. Our first diagram, we can see that they're both starting in the same place, so their phase shift is zero degrees. To add them together, we're going to pick points on these lines and add the numerical values and then plot them down below. So on this first one, we have zero on the first line, zero on this line adds together to make zero for our resultant wave. Uh, next line at 90 degrees, we have plus one and plus one makes plus two for the resultant. Next one, we're back on the zero line. Zero line makes zero. At 270 degrees, we have negative 1, and negative 1 makes negative 2. Next one is back to 0. We're on the 360-degree line, plus 0 makes 0. Now, if I continue this pattern, you can see it's going to be the same pattern over and over and over again. Once we have enough dots, we can continue the pattern on and get our resultant wave. Next wave, we need to figure out what the phase shift is. This wave is starting in the same spot at zero. This wave is starting up at the crest. And this distance from zero to the first crest is 90 degrees. So we're going to say that this wave is 90 degrees out of phase with this one. To find our resultant wave, we're going to add the numbers. We have zero from the first wave plus one from the second wave makes one. Next one, we have one from the first wave and zero from the second wave makes one. Next one, we have zero from the first wave and negative one from the second wave makes negative one. Next one, we have negative one from the first wave plus zero from the second wave makes negative one. Zero and plus one makes plus one again. Plus one and zero makes plus one. So this pattern is not quite as tall as the other one. The other one went up to two. This one is shorter. Next one, first wave starting the same spot. The second one is starting way over here on the 180 degree line. So these are 180 degrees out of phase. Adding these up, we have zero and zero makes zero. One and negative one makes zero. Zero and zero makes zero. Negative one and one makes zero. 0 and 0 make 0, 1 and negative 1 make 0. So this is a flat line. They're completely canceling each other out because they're 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Next one, first wave starts in the same spot. The second one is starting down at the bottom of the trough. So counting by 90s, this is 90, 180. This is the 270 degree line. So this one is 270 degrees out of phase with the first one. To find a resultant wave, we'll be adding these. 0 plus minus 1 is minus 1. 1 plus 0 is positive 1. 0 plus 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. That looks very similar to the 90 degree pattern, except it's also shifted over a little bit the last one we can see we've completed the phase this is 360 degrees or zero degrees they're both the same thing and we never go beyond 360 so once you get up to 360 we're starting the cycle over and saying that these are both back in phase with each other again